This will be a brief tutorial on complex numbers. A complex number has two parts. It has a real part and it has an imaginary part. A purely imaginary number has real part equal to zero. A purely real number has imaginary part equal to zero. Imaginary numbers come from the fact that mathematicians were not able to solve this equation. If we move one to the other side, we ultimately get that x equals the square root of minus one. So at the time, mathematicians didn't know how to solve this. So we had to give it a name. We called it i. i stands for imaginary numbers. In electrical engineering, though, i is reserved for current. So in electrical engineering, we replace i with j. That's our imaginary number. If you wanted to write j, an imaginary number, a purely imaginary number in complex form, well, you would just have to say that the real part is 0, and your imaginary part would just be 1. So you just have j. A helpful way to visualize complex numbers is to draw them in the complex plane. Your x-axis is your real axis, and your y-axis is your imaginary axis. So let's say we pick a point here. This is, corresponds to A in the real axis, and this corresponds to B on your imaginary axis. You can sort of think of your complex number as a vector. Now, this complex number makes an angle here. This is theta. So, and let's say this complex number is Z. Well, if we were to write this in the form that we just discussed, it would be A is your real part and B is your imaginary part. The J is always in front of your imaginary part. So your imaginary part can also be negative just as your real part can also be negative. In this example, we ch I chose both to be positive. Now, your complex number has a magnitude similar to a vector. So the magnitude would be the length of this, of this line the magnitude is simply you take your square root of your real part squared and add it to the imaginary part squared. This is your magnitude. So you can write A as your magnitude times cosine of theta. You can write also B as the magnitude times sine of theta. So, let's go like this so we have it here. So, you can rewrite z as, well we plug in, what is a? a is magnitude z cosine theta plus, we have j, and then b is magnitude z sine of theta. So, we have a common factor here, that is the magnitude of z. So we can take out the common factor, and inside the parentheses we have cosine theta plus j sine theta, and this equals z. So this part can be written as e to the j theta using Euler's formula, which is simply e to the j theta equals cosine theta plus j plus j sine of theta. So we're left with this. So your complex number can be written in two forms. You have here originally, this is your what they call rectangular, rectangular form. This one is called exponential form. A useful shorthand for exponential form is you take your magnitude and you put the angle sign and just put theta. This is called polar format. It's the same thing as exponential, I'm just, it's a shorthand. We take out the e to the j and you put theta. It's understood. So some things that we can do with complex numbers, we can add them, we can subtract them, we can multiply them, and I will show you how. So, 
let's say we take two complex numbers. We have Z1, which will be A1 plus J B1, and then we have another complex number Z2, which is A2 plus J B2. So, addition. The way you add complex numbers, Z1 plus Z2, is you add your real parts, A1 plus A2, you put your plus J, and then you add your imaginary parts. Similarly, subtraction, you do the same thing, but you're subtracting. So Z1 minus Z2, you subtract your real parts, and then you subtract your imaginary parts. Multiplication. Here, it's useful to use your exponential form. So let's write first these complex numbers in exponential form. So Z1 is going to be magnitude Z1 e to the j, let's call it phi1. So I forgot to mention something. So this angle theta, if we were to go back here, your a is z cosine theta, your b is z sine theta. So to find theta, theta is just going to be using trigonometry arctan of B over A. So going back here, to put it in polar form, phi 1 is simply going to be arctan of B1 over A1. Similarly, similarly for Z2, we have magnitude of z2 e to the j phi 2 where phi 2 is going to be arctan of b2 over a2 so for multiplication it's helpful to use this form the exponential form so we would have z1 times z2 so you multiply your magnitudes z1 Z2, and then for the exponents, you would do as you normally would, you would add the exponents. So e to the j, you would have phi1 plus phi2, like this. And this is your multiplication. So for division, again, like multiplication, it's useful to use your polar format. So Z1 divided by Z2 is going to be, you have your polar form of Z1, which is, or exponential form, is magnitude Z1 e to the J phi 1 over Z2 magnitude e to the J phi 2. So you have your magnitudes divided as normal, and then you have your exponents subtracted. Reciprocal. So 1 over z1, again using exponential form, you have 1 over your magnitude, and your exponential is just going to gain a minus here. So at this point, it might be helpful to bring up the, con the, the concept of complex conjugate. So Again, we have our complex number is Z, right? Which is A is the real part and B is your imaginary part. If we were to take the complex conjugate, what, what that basically means is we're making the, we just put a minus in front of the imaginary part, like this. Here's your complex conjugate of Z, if this is our example. If we were to multiply z times its complex conjugate, let's see what we would get. We would get a squared, then you would have a times minus jb, so you'd have minus jab, you would have then plus jab, and then you would have minus j squared b squared. 
this part cancels with this part, well, we remember that j is square root of minus 1. So square root of minus 1 squared just becomes minus 1, and we're going to get a positive. So finally, we get a squared plus b squared. So it turns out that z times your complex conjugate is going to be really your magnitude squared. So it's helpful to understand the, con the concept of complex conjugate. Uh, to come back to the properties or the ways that we can, com um, we can manipulate complex numbers, we did reciprocal. If we were to take square root of a complex number, square root, let's say, of z1, well, we would take the square root of the magnitude and simply, uh, this should be phi1, phi1 divided by 2. And we can write this in polar format as such. Remember that polar format is we're just leaving out the e to the j and writing the angle in our little angle sign here. So finally, another helpful thing to mention about j is 1 over j. Well, 1 over j is just going to be minus j. This is going to be useful to remember for other calculations that you're going to need to do with complex numbers. So that concludes our tutorial on complex numbers.